Hello again folks, I'm still in the Bible Tower, still on watch, and I thought I'd read another chapter, because I've still got plenty of time on my hands, there's fires going, not much else is happening, so I'm going to read you another chapter. It's, it's chapter 9, it's called Blackbirds. Uh, before I read it, it's really difficult this chapter to read, because there's a lot of words that I'm going to really struggle with, so don't laugh. And I'm going to do it in two parts, because it's really long as well, and it's hard to download in that amount of space so uh, I'm going to do it in two parts. First part, are you ready? In order to help members of the public identify the ravens of the tower and for my team to be able to keep an eye on them when I'm not around, the ravens usefully wear coloured anklets. I have trained the ravens to put them on every morning, just like we put on our shoes and socks. No, of course I haven't. But for the record, they still wear coloured bands. And I'll go through which raven has what coloured band. And to be honest with you, I do change them quite often. So don't, don't, if you come to the Tower of London, it, it does change. Right, okay, so I have. Erin has a red metal band. Rocky has a brown golden band. Harris has a blue metal band. Grip has a purple metal band. George has a yellow band, plastic. Poppy has a red band, of course. Jubilee has a metal lime green band. And Melina, pink, of course. So they're the coloured bands for the ravens at the moment. You'll be surprised how many times I get half. We used to have a leaflet at the Tower of London that would say it, but I changed it around so often we got rid of the leaflet. It was a bit of a waste of paper as well. Okay, I'm going on. Most of us city dwellers, and I class myself as a city dweller having lived in London for 16 years, could probably identify a pigeon. They're absolutely everywhere. Or a blackbird or a robin. A duck maybe, just as long as you don't have to name what type of duck it is. But that's probably about it. On a day-to-day -day basis, before I became Raven Master, I wouldn't be able to identify too many birds either. So let me provide you with a basic guide of raven identification, the Raven Master's Guide to Raven Spotting. First, let's get our terms correct. Some of the local names in the UK for ravens are thus. And of course, I'm going to include Ireland on that. Corby, Corby, Krupi, Krupai, in Irish, Fiat or Bran, in Cornwall, Marburan, Ravine, Parson, Ralph, and in Welsh, Sigfran, Sigfrain, Gigfran. Common names of the ravens worldwide include, bear with me, it took me ages when I was doing the audio tape for this. And if I get the pronunciation wrong, sorry. Danish, Raven. French, Corbeau. German, Ravi. Italian, Corvo. Japanese, Karasu. Polish, Kruk. Russian, Voron, Spanish, Krovu, Turkish, Kuzgun. I think I got them right. Working at the tower, you get to pick up all sorts of lingo. I know the word for exit in many of the major European languages, in Arabic and in Brazilian Portuguese as well as the international sign language for lavatory, or what you Americans call it, the bathroom. Although why you call it a bathroom, I have no idea, because you don't come to the Tower of London and want to get a bath. Anyway, whatever you call them, the ravens at the tower are what are prob prob probably Latinly, Latinly called Corvus Corvax. 
as named by Carl Linnaeus. I'm not very good at getting these pronunciations right, am I? Who, you remember, if you listen to your science lessons when you were at school, as I certainly didn't, was a Swedish biologist who came up with the whole system of naming the species. Ravens are part of the corvid family, which include crows, magpies, jays, nutcrackers, and even the cute little coughs. In Britain and Ireland, the most common corvids are Corvus frugelicus, the rooks, with their grey faces and rounded tail feathers. Carrying crows, Corvus corona, who have shorter beaks than the rooks. Hooded crows, Corvus cornix, which are the ones that look like they're wearing grey jumpers or hoodies. Corvus picker, or picker picker, the magpie who need no introduction, and jackdaws, Corvus mondula, those strange stubby little creatures with mad starey silvery eyes. Blackbirds, note, are not corvids, they are thrushes. A lot of corvids are black, but not all blackbirds are corvids. I know, it's confusing. Don't blame me, I didn't make it up. There are more than 40 members of the genus Corvus worldwide, and they all tend to be, in general and in summary, adaptable, intelligent birds who typically mate for life, hide their surplus food, and eat both animals and vegetables. They're also an incredibly hardy bunch who can be found just about anywhere and are at home anywhere in deserts in the Arctic, on coasts, on mountains, and in towns and cities. Ravens, of course, are survivors. They're also sleek. They're stocky. They have long, strong legs and feet, and a distinguished gait, which makes them look like they rather human-like. They walk with a sort of a roll and a slouch, makes them quite comical. Charles Dickens, the famous writer and novelist, he described their walk as of a very peculiar gentleman with exceedingly tight boots on, trying to walk over as fast as he can over loosed cobbles. I couldn't put it better myself. They have also large heads and large eyes proportionate to their bodies. They have stout heavy bills and they're a little bit shaggy and jowly around the neck. A little bit like some of the Yeoman warders. They look a bit like crows, but they're bigger than crows. In fact, quite a lot bigger. Ravens weigh about three times as much as your average crow, which is more than difference between a light flyweight and a heavyweight in boxing. That a crow's, their beaks are bigger and heavier than crows. They have a broader wingspan. A raven's wingspan is between three and four feet. How else can you tell the difference between a raven and a crow? Ravens often fly in pairs, crows normally fly in groups. A raven's tail is wedge shaped. A crow's tail is more like a fan. Ravens croak. Crows crawl. The first time I got up and close and personal with a raven, I couldn't believe the size of them. I'd been working at the tower for about six months when the raven master at the time, a man by the name of Derek Coyle, came up to me one day and said, hey boy, he called everybody boy. He was about 60 at the time and I was about 40. He said, hey boy, he said, I think the ravens might like you. I thought to myself, why did he call me boy? I was 40. And how the hell does he know the ravens might like me? But I was curious. I wasn't entirely sure whether Derek meant that they would like me 
in, as in they would like to eat me, or whether they would like me as a person or as a yeoman warder. I had visions of something like Strictly Come Dancing, with the birds all lined up holding scorecards marked out of ten. Whatever he meant, I was intrigued. Since arriving at the tower, I'd watched the ravens hopping around Tower Green, going about their daily business, but I had no real understanding of exactly why they were there or what. I knew almost nothing about birds. At school, I had a friend who was a keen pigeon fancier, and I remember he showed me his pigeons, which, to be honest, I didn't really get excited about. My only real contact with the Tower Ravens was when our cat, a large grey Persian cat called Tigger, used to bother them by sitting on the top of the old cages, lazily dangling its paw through the bars and teasing them. And Derek would yell, yell at me, Get that damn cat off the cages, Chris, or the birds will have it for dinner. Surely, I thought, it would be the other way round. It was years later, of course, I realised that Derek was right. More than once I've seen a raven chasing a cat or a dog around Tower Green. Come on then, said Derek, follow me. And I followed him down to the raven's enclosure. You did not argue with Derek Coyle. RVM, Royal Victorian Medal. He'd been a legend in the army and was a legend within the body of young warders. With Derek, what you saw was what you jolly well got. He had an exemplary military career, having joined the Green Harrods, a famous British infantry unit. He was also known, they were also known as the Yorkshire Regiment. As a boy soldier, and having worked his way up the ranks, he became the battalion's regimental sergeant major. He was your archetypical sergeant major, tall and erect, even when relaxed. He was always smart, always sharp. He would have been perfect in an old black and white war movie, but beneath his harsh military exterior, he was the very kindest of gentlemen and a great judge of character. So Derek led me to the old raven's quarters, opened up the door and told me to get inside the cage with two of the biggest birds that I'd ever seen in my life. Don't look them directly in the eye, he said. And keep your distance, don't get too close, he said. They find that threatening. <laughs> I found it threatening too. I, was I had absolutely no intention of looking them directly in the eye, or even getting closer to them. I was feeling rather intimidated. I'd always been keen on wildlife, but I had never really been this close to such a huge bird. I didn't quite know what to expect. Anyone who's ever been trapped in a small space for a bird will know exactly what I mean. You don't have to be orthophobic to be a little bit anxious around birds. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't understand what they're doing, birds can seem wildly unpredictable. I also heard from the other young warders all sorts of lurid tales of raven attacks and the last thing I wanted to be bitten by a raven. I edged very slowly further inside the cage. Don't show him you're scared, Derek shouted. They'll notice and they'll remember. Okay, I said, absolutely petrified, but determined not to show it. So there I was, standing in the corner of the cage for what seemed like an eternity, with a pair of ravens staring hard at me, their beady eyes piercing deep within my soul. I've been in some tricky spots in my time, but I can remember that as if it was yesterday, suddenly, to my surprise, one of the birds came and perched right next to me. I could feel the raven's breath on my face. I wondered whether I should start to move away slowly. 
But to my surprise, the raven simply cocked its head to one side, dipped its head as if it was to bow, thrust out its wings and gave a loud croaking sound. All right, Derek said, get out, out you come. Of course, looking back, I realised that Derek put me in the cage that night with two of the largest ravens to gauge my reaction, to see whether I showed fear and whether I could cope with being around them. Plus, ravens themselves are great judges of character and Derek would have picked up instantly whether or not I was going to be able to work with them. Sometimes the only way to learn is to be thrown in at the deep end. Yep, you'll do, he said, hauling me out the cage. Meet me tomorrow, 0530 hours. Be sharp, be on time. And that was that. I'd passed the interview. I'd been picked by the ravens and taken under Derek's wing. Excuse the pun. I wouldn't dream of introducing my new assistants to the ravens like that nowadays. Well, maybe quite not like that. As I was saying, ravens are big. The average raven is about two foot long and they weigh about two and a half pounds. They are indeed the largest of all the so-called passerine birds, which going back to the naming and the classification system, are birds of the order of passiforms, which include more than half of all the bird species. There are lots of birds that are bigger, obviously, herons and waterfowl, falcons and other birds of prey. But for the most of us on a daily basis, the corvids are going to be the biggest birds that you see around. And while we're talking passiforms, here's a bit of ornithological stuff for you. Passerines are divided into three suborders, one of which is called passeri or ossines. Ossine means songbird, and passerine literally means perching. So ravens are part of the corvid family, the ossine suborder and the passerine order, which is good news to know, isn't it? And which is about all I know about the order of passiforms. <laughs> what I tell you with certainty, certainly, what I tell you with certainty, passerine wise, is that Perch ravens most certainly do. Often the most inconvenient places. Ravens are also elegant and playful in flight, known for their rolls and dives. And when they walk, they kind of strut around. Oh, and of course, their main distinguishing feature is that they are black. I'm going for a cup of coffee.